Everybody must be sad. The Lord is give his holy temple, so everybody must be sad. Oh, silence. 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 Oh, silence. 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 Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Community Watch on Metro TV with me, Gabriel. Together with Rosemary Koko Anyiba and Joshua Taria Adom, the sun is up. We've climbed up the Ebri Hills and arrived at the Ekropon School for the Blind here in the Eastern Region to learn of the inspiring story of students and teachers on campus in the schools. How are they climbing the academic ladder here? And as well, picking up vocational and technical skills to better their lives, even as they are contending with their condition. Veronica Dere, Akropon School for the Blind Headmistress. Akropon School for the Blind is a basic school that we have KG up to DHS 3. And we have the vocational department and we have rehabilitation department and music as well. The music department is also a skill that some are very good in singing. You know, the blind and singing. They can sing very well. So some too, that is their interest. So those who also show interest in music, we take them to the music department to learn some of the instruments, how to play them. And our promise to God first is that we will never leave you alone because we love you so much. Because you are so special. You are so special to our hearts. In Akropon School for the Blind, we have the mainstream. That's the GHS I mentioned. They pass through the normal uh, course like any other regular school. We write BC, then the child will proceed to SS, SHS, like the regular schools. It's the same program we are doing here. It's not a different thing. The only difference is that we learn Braille, which is our way of communication. Then at the, the vocational department, those who cannot cope with academic work, then we pick them to identify a skill there that they can do. So we have soap making, beat making, door mask, basketry, all that is learned at the vocational department. Then at the rehab center, we rehabilitate those who come here as a resource of late blindness, maybe in a way of education, they get blind lately. So they come back here, then we take them through rehabilitation, where they will learn the Braille. Then after learning the Braille, they will go back and continue their education from wherever they stop. I'm currently at the vocational department and it's a busy time here. Fortunately, I have one of their teachers here to explain what we are witnessing now. Then what are they doing currently? Right then they are preparing uh, liquid soap. Liquid soap, okay. So eventually they could prepare on large scale and sell commercial basis. Yes. Impressive. So I want to get to them and understand the process. Hello. Hi. Hello. Okay, now it is saying, how are you all? We thank God. I am also very fine. So I want one of you 
that I can speak to to explain to me what exactly you are doing. I've been told you are making soap. I can see a few of you also working with rope. So I want one of you making the rope or doing the rope work and then another making soap to explain the process to me and how you feel about it. My name is Susu Agbeko Francis. So share your experience with us. When did you decide to join the Vocational Institute here? Oh, okay. I decided to join about five years ago or something like that. So I, I went to rehab first to learn how to write and read before I joined my colleagues at the department here. Okay, so you weren't born blind. What happened? Share this experience with us, please. You know, it is disheartening. You are, maybe you are going on your normal work, you are doing your work, you can feed yourself. Unfortunately, maybe you become blind at once, and then you, you will not be in yourself again. So maybe if you don't see anybody to comfort you, maybe you wish to end your life. That's exactly what happened to you. Yeah. You got to the point where you wanted to end your life. Yeah. Because of the trauma that I'm going through. So what was the turning point? When did you decide that no, I'm not going to end my life, but rather I'll come to the Accrue Pond School for the Blind to 2014. Then I decided about the person who uh, maybe I want to help, but I try but I couldn't do God be so good, 2000, 2019, and then I joined my colleagues. Did you get the help you needed? No, but I just try. Okay. So currently, you are making soap? Liquid soap. Liquid soap. So what goes into that? Share with us. Okay, we have like raw materials. We have about nine raw materials for doing liquid soap. Number one is the base salt, water, booster, thickener, preservative, gasoline, and then perfume and color. So, yeah, that Nine. Is materials okay. that we use for. So how, how do you join them? Is it that you mix them up together no. at a go? You have to arrange them. First, you have to uh, measure your this thing, your base first. So after that, you have to put it in the bowl. And then you have to add your salt. So you have to dissolve your salt first. So stirring your base, then you are adding your salt solution gradually. And then after that, you have to add your maybe booster rice or where we have some powder for me to do. You have to add the powders first before adding the main, uh, the remaining liquid ones. Yeah. Okay, so you have to keep on stirring, stirring, stirring. So what happens when you keep staring? It will become thicker when you are uh, you are staring, but keep on staring and then adding uh, clean water to it, and then gradually, gradually, it will become to normal. And then you are done. Oh, okay. So this is liquid soap that you are making. Yes. Have you been trained how to, you can also make it hardened to become that stone-like soap we see? Yeah. You are able to do that too. Yeah. So, what are you looking forward to doing after school? Mm, after school, we all wish we don't want to end our life in the street again. So, we want if a government or any uh, NGO can support us so that the need that we want from this school, maybe uh, the materials and then the machines and those things, then we have to start our business at home so we should uh, if you are doing something you will not go to you know end of your life in the street again or calling somebody please i want one cd or something like that if you call somebody for that then it means that you are in this school then you are completed but still you are bearing to some people's but you don't really, you don't want it that way what they are being taught here is very important and is an integral part of our everyday life. And for him wanting to establish himself, to create a small venture, to be able to um, produce more, 
And to be able to trade in that and earn a living, for me, I believe it's laudable and thus requires everyone, government or benevolent organizations or you, our dear viewer, to step forth, partner him or even the school to be able to advance this course. I have joined another student, he's Prosper. I see that he has an item and using rope to tie it up. So that's what I see as a lay person, but let me speak to him and get to know what exactly he's doing. Hi Francis, what are you up to? What are you doing? Chair. What goes into chair making? I'll use a rope to do it. Then you can sit on it, on the chair, yes. 2018, no. I am the way I used to answer a truck a vocational, maybe cosmetics, new pastries, near But before that, Nami, me who be that? The way I used to rope no yaya kunya, but me bahan in the ambience, and yet may see any now because me see uncle, me name near Babwami, and I'm so made a cobom because me person Marco Jenna Street, so I quite say straight. And then I'm able to enter my mother ever had. Okay, so he said he came here in 2018 and went to the rehab, meaning that he wasn't born blind, but he became visually impaired at some point. So there at the rehab unit, he was trained or taught literacy and arithmetic. So he learned basic writing, how to read and write and do calculations. And at some point, he then decided to move to the other units. That's where he could do catering and or pastry, or even the chair making and as well the soap making. And the obia or shawu se se a a e bia bibinti omunso omunhu adi e ye no. E di na uwa country omu. I know there may be a number of other visually impaired or other persons with disability who feel so devastated because of their current state. What's your message to them? Oh, kaka meti mi akato omu se, especially the um, family no. E ye ni pana adu se, ni pana wenye ni problem ti ni. Bibi e ni wo obeti mi aye. So adi ne ba hanu mukwa adi ya. Obedu hanu mo obe u bibi ni adoku obeti mi se obetu a dedication so. So obe yusu ni nsan so aye bibi ni. I think se se family ni. I support you more than ever, and also ever more in your plan. Okay, so he says that families should not eject or abandon the awards who are visually impaired or who are physically challenged or a person living with disability. You were counting money, yet you, you, you are completely visually impaired. Where then who say Sika Sika I won't say, and I will pay no more. Me she Sika ne kesi. Sika no kesi. Enunkuwa say e biya se se wunim se e biya Sika e ye kesi e ba e biya e e e e e e kitwa. And you'll be country will say, Kesia no your 20 pesos, now Kitwa no your 50 pesos, and now we're there. Meaning 50 pesos, and I mean 10 pesos. Okay, okay. So she's removing coins from her bag. Uh, 50 pesos. Okay, so this is 50 pesos. Okay, she's removing another one from her purse. Is there another coin in the purse? No. Oh, so at this point, mm -hmm, you've removed the note. One CD. Okay. So she's removing another. No way. So yeah, ten CD. It's a ten CD way, no. And so sing one CD, no. Oh. And walk a crown, so sing one CD, no. Oh. And you know what I would do? 
enti se mi ma wo bi e sika sika fufuru nso a wo be ye den ho se because se sika ni nyina ye ye different different so she's managed to remove 10 cd note and mention that indeed that was 10 cds and then removed one cd note and mentioned that it's one cd so i have removed another note not from her purse but from my pocket i want to know if she's able to tell so i have another note here are you able to tell us what note is this five cd uh, are you sure we are sure say we have five cd Yo. So she mentioned five cities, but when I mentioned whether she was sure of it, she's told me to hold on a bit. She's checking with the other notes. Eh. Hey. Hey, hey. Five cities. Five cities. So she's come back still at where she was, stressing that indeed the money is five cities. So congratulations, you got it right. Indeed, it's five cities. And then it becomes yours. So over to me, I keep here. So she may not have the luxury of sight to then easily see the money and then mention that or determine that indeed. It's one CD, two CDs, five CDs, 10 CDs, 100 Ghana. You may have that privilege. So please take good care of yourself, but then also to look out for dear colleagues like Sarah. So whichever help you can offer them, you do to make life better or to then put them in a position where they are also able to go about their daily lives just like any of us. Currently in the showroom of the vocational department and this is where they bring their finished items or products. Behind me are baskets beautifully made by the students of the Ecropon School for the Blind and there are various forms and sizes so this is different from what you see right here and they can produce commercial quantities as many as you may want so please you can place your order and this is what francis was doing a chair you could also as well see it to be a table but it could serve different purposes it looks really nice having different colors here we see doormat also made right here i can also see beads keenly interested in what i see here because i saw many of them preparing solutions and it turned out to be soap making so that's the end product of what they were doing earlier for which we had an interaction with Agbeko and it's liquid soap they have many of them here and they've created their own brand for it a coupon school for the blind and I see ASB so I haven't been told what that means but I have guessed and I I trust I've guessed right one of their officials, he's been very helpful to the team here, uh, who is Maxwell Owaria Santi, will later confirm to me. But if you see ASB, I am certain that it is a Krupong School for the Blind Liquid Soap, produced in Ghana. Indeed, it's been mentioned here, produced in Ghana by a Krupong School for the Blind Vocational Craft Unit. And they've mentioned the ingredients, which Agbeko told us earlier for dishwashing and hands so if you want to keep your hands clean yes if you want to keep your utensils clean then you want to resort to the liquid soap here and they have yet another item another detergent a coupon school for the blind asb parazone produced in ghana by a coupon school for the blind vocational crafts unit they've provided their contact 024 995 0911 or 0243 525 205 for disinfecting and removal of tough 
dead stains. It is also effective for cleaning of tiles, trash cans, sinks, toilets, etc. Yes, enrollment is good. Those days they used not to, but these days, especially this time, we have seen that a lot of parents are bringing their children to school. Those days, it is difficult to accept such condition. So when a child is blind, you don't accept. Most parents will not accept. Even if it is me, I will not accept it. So they try to go to hospital. Even when the doctor even declared them blind, they don't still accept it. Then some will go around uh, shopping. That is what we call it. They will go to churches. Some will go to a whole lot of places. So at the long run, they will now accept the condition. So by the time they will bring the child here, they had already wasted the child's time before. So at times, it's not so good, but that is human nature. At any time, we admit, because we don't have age limit because of our condition. We don't say because we are 10 years, you cannot go to P1. No. At any, we leave space for that matter, so that when you come at that at any time a child is, is, is here, we, we, we try to assist and admit the child. We are moving on to meet a woman, a philanthropist called Madame Esther Najili Boli Odamten. She's the founder of Eden's Oasis and she's here to support them with some items. But more importantly, she's seeking to establish a university, the first ever university for the visually impaired as well for other persons with disability in Ghana. And it will be the first in West Africa too. And for me, it's such a laudable initiative that we all must rally around and support. my princes and my princesses are saying that because you are <laughs> so my name is Miss Esther and my sister here is Miss Barbara and we are here today because the Lord has put it on our heart as always to come here check on you and uh, offer you the little uh, things that we have here, food items, soup, and uh, uh, some money. Uh, we really love you. We have been coming here every year, sometimes twice a year. And our promise to God first is that we will never leave you alone. We take this in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That we are so grateful. We thank you that you love us. And these things prove to that effect that when we are in need, you send your angels to provide for us. May all praise be unto your name. And we are praying that as we receive this in a good heart, in faith, that is coming from you. Let them be blessed. On behalf of the, my, the school management, the teaching and non-teaching staff, the entire body students, I am glad to render this vote of thanks. My first thanks go to the Almighty God, making this blessed day possible for us. Now, second thanks go to the our visitors, Eden Oas, who have paid visit to us this morning. We say, God bless them. My third thanks go to my fellow students for comporting themselves for this occasion. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so there they go. 
clapping for themselves for comportment. There is high level discipline here. I've attested to it. And, uh, and my last thanks go to uh, our visitors. We say thank you as our fellow uh, Spaniard, Spanish people will say gracias. Thank you. Yeah. The nada, the nada, the nada, the nada. We have committees for donation, benevolence that comes to help. So everything is recorded. Anyone who walks in here, even if you are bringing us a bar of key soup, we record it. And then we give a, that is kind of appreciation letter. We give it to the one who is bringing the donor who is bringing it. Then we keep one in our files. Then we keep the same records with the storekeeper. So normally when auditors come, they go through all. So there's no way that we pick something and share. We don't do it. So some of the, the things they say, it is not true. When you come to our files, I wish one day one of the donors will come and witness what auditors do here. When they come, they go through. They go to the storekeeper, they check, and they come to the store. At times, you will not even know. They will come and check the files, the donation files. Then you remove all, then they cross-check, and everything is always on point. I had a vision of the former headmistress in the privacy of her home, where she was praying. And uh, the Lord took me around the school saw the kids in their dining room singing, but there was no food. And then it took me to the lady's room where she took money out of her, her drawer and gave it to another gentleman who used to be the math teacher. And in the vision, the attire that they were wearing and everything, when I sent for the donation to come in, she was wearing the same thing to prove that, yes, there is a God. Really? And uh, when she gave the money to the gentleman, the next thing I saw is that my precious kids were in the dining room. And this time they were singing and there was a bowl of rice and what do you call it, in front of them. And they were enjoying. And the Lord said, I want you to take care of them for me. And ever since, we have been friends with them. But we realized that um, our friendship with them and just bringing a few bags of food and uh, some money, and it, it, it doesn't really, I mean, it's feeding them, but there's more to it because these kids you see here are very brilliant. The government is doing well. The students here, they don't pay anything, but we feed them three times a day. We all know the government cannot do it all. So in any way you come to help us, we accept it. I know that if we invest in these children, these are future leaders. In these children, if you had come here earlier and you saw them coming from their dormitories to school, they held each other. The one who could see a little is holding on to someone who cannot see at all. You know, teamwork, that's one thing I saw. They are dedicated to each other. The love that they have is deep because they don't see what we see out there. They see from their spirit. And so when you bless such kids, you are not throwing your money away. Now, what the Lord also put on my heart was that in the whole of Africa, if I'm right, there are only about three universities, what we call, what Americans would call colleges. In West Africa, there's none. There's one in South Africa, somewhere in the two scattered in East Africa, somewhere. But in West Africa, there's no college for the school for the blind. So then you ask We yourself, should place emphasis on university. university. So our viewers appreciate yes. exactly what you are university, driving at. You know, and, um, uh, and I ask myself, there's so many of them. How many of them will get the chance or the opportunity to go to university? It will be just like a drop in the ocean. And so if we can start a university for them and we can even admit 1% 
it will mean a lot. Rather than see them finish school, compete on the same level that the normal children are, and even excel more than the normal children, and yet they cannot go to university. Where will they end up? And, and I, I, it's not only Eden Oasis, I'm reaching out to anybody who will hear my voice. As we are speaking, our little savings have been able, we are negotiating to buy a piece of land, an acre land in Pram Pram, where uh, that, because it's, it's located for colleges and universities, the Methodist University is already there. And uh, we are aspiring to also put up something small so with the help of everyone that can hear us, please, if you take a ball of kinky, remember my children. If you drink water, remember my children. We have yet another personality here to share a word. So you've heard about the vision, the plan, and what we all expect to see in few years to come. How do you find this idea? Oh, I find it very good. It's a very good idea, and we wish, as my mother said, we will continue with that to prove on. But I will be coming myself in two months, and we've heard again. It's been a fulfilling journey, getting to know the unique things that students of the Akropon School for the Blind are able to do. The vocational skills, the mainstream academic work, and related others. These are brilliant pupils with dedicated staff. Please come over. They are always here to receive you warmly and partner you to ensure that students here continue to receive quality education as always. Thanks for making time to watch this week's edition of Community Watch with me, Gabriel Nyobodai, Togbo Ashon, together with Rosemary Koko Anyigba, Joshua Tariu Adum, and Joseph Frimpong. Catch up with us same time next week. Bye-bye.